Greetings, Science Maximites. My name is Phil. And I am Opposite Phil. Opposite Phil. That's right. Blue lab coat, yellow shirt, evil mustache. I see. Anyway, we're looking at opposing forces today. That's uh, forces that make things go down and forces that make things go up. Right, things with more density and things with less density. Uh, gravity and the opposite, which is anti-gravity. Anti-gravity isn't really a thing. You're... Well, I have to do the opposite. Right. Um, buoyancy. And buoyancy's opposite, which is girlancy. No, girlancy is not the opposite of buoyancy. You know, you're not helping. Right, not helping. Opposite. Ha-ha. <laughs> Hello. Uh, goodbye. Today we're going to be making a gravity-powered boat. Ta-da! It's pretty easy to make. You just put water in the top here, gravity of the water pushes it out the straw, and the boat goes forward. And it's super easy to make. You only need four things. A piece of styrofoam, a plastic cup, craft stick, and a straw. And the tools you'll need, a pen, a craft knife, and the help of an adult, and science glue. Which is the same as regular glue, except I only use this glue for science. You take your styrofoam and you cut it into a boat shape. That requires the knife and the help of the adult. Then take your cup and draw the circle that your cup will sit in. And then you wanna put two slashes with your craft knife in there. Again, get the help of an adult if you need it. Uh, and then start carving out the styrofoam with your finger and make a nice little indent just like this for your cup to fit in. See, and then it fits in nice, nice and snug. So then what you wanna do is you want to make a hole in the cup. You can use a pencil. The hole has to be just big enough for the straw to fit in. First, you want to take the straw and dig up in this direction so that it will be a nice angle for the water to come out and then you want to get the straw back up into the cup like that and then glue it so that it is not going to leak any water and then in the final step and this is your choice you don't have to do this but you can use your craft stick and you can make a rudder or if you want you can make a whole keel which goes just like that and it is right in the middle of the boat, and this helps the boat go straight, because sometimes the straw goes off to the side one way or the other. Okay, water-powered boat. Actually, it's a water and gravity-powered boat. You see, what you do is you fill up the cup with water, and the gravity of the water in the cup pushes it out the straw, and the boat goes forward. And this is what it looks like in the water. You fill up the cup and the gravity pushes the water out that way. The buoyancy of the boat keeps it afloat and good old Newton's third law, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. The water going out the straw this way pushes the boat that way. And it works pretty well. Whoa, if it's going straight. That's why we have the keel. <laughs> Check it out. This is the ultimate mousetrap boat. We got 10 mousetraps here. We got our long arm. We have it attached at the right point of the lever, we think. And then we've got two, two paddle wheels at the back and pontoons. Yes. Yeah, so what I do you think, think this Kayla? this thing is set. It's gonna be awesome? Yep. Okay, ready? Ready? Let's test it. Well, oh, it's working, hey, it's working. It's picking up speed. Yes. Wow. Whoa, mousetrap boat. I mean, it's good. It's good. It's not science max good. Yeah, uh, we were hoping it would go faster. Faster no. or? No, pretty much just faster, yeah, okay. Obviously, we need to store more energy that will make the paddle wheels go faster, right? Yeah, so we just have to think about it, right? Like, what's stronger than a mousetrap? Well, 10 mousetraps. That's why we have 10 <laughs> mousetraps, Michaela. Okay, what's what's stronger than 10 mousetraps? 11 mousetraps. <laughs> like, if we just keep going, okay, and it's just gonna get super trap. wide, we'll have a thousand mousetrap wide. What's, what's, enough what? with the mousetraps. Have you ever seen, like, a rat trap? No? They're huge. Well, hold on. I can just get one from the portal. One rat trap coming up. Oh, I can't, I can't camp from, all right. Well, that's fine. And whoa. Wow, yeah, look at that. Yeah, that is a lot bigger. Huge okay, so difference. snap yours. Is, all right, is it? ready? No strap. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrifying. So that's a lot more power. Yeah, a lot of force. Uh, so tell you what, we have a little mousetrap boat. Why don't we build a little single rat trap powered boat and we'll race them and we'll just see the difference in, in power from one rat trap to one mousetrap. I like that. We'll do a prototype before we make a big one. Yeah, okay, come on, let's go. So we built a rat trap boat to race the mousetrap boat. 
And then Michaela and I got a little competitive. Check out the rat trap boat. No, oh, check out the mouse trap boat. Mouse trap boat is better because... <laughs> yeah, rat trap boat is better. It's got bigger springs, more potential energy stored in here. And, and mouse trap boat has less potential energy and less springs, but he's got more heart and he really wants to win. Hey, yeah, I'll tell you what, Phil. Loser jumps in the pool. What? Oh, um, uh, okay. Sure, let's do it. Okay, ready? Go! So, as you may have guessed, the rat trap boat has a lot more potential energy that can be stored in the spring. Okay, so, rat trap boat is clearly better than the mouse trap boat. We make the boat the same way, yeah. but we use rat traps instead of mouse traps. What do you say? <laughs> Love it. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Wait a second, Phil. What? Ferris Fairy, you gotta jump in the pool. Okay, fine. Here you go. Hold this. <laughs> Phil to Mission Control. Come in, Mission Control. Psh, uh, this is Mission Control, Phil. Uh, we read you loud and clear. Psh, I would... Oh. Greeting! Greeting, science! Greeting, science! Greeting, science maximites! Welcome to Science Max Experiments at Large. My name is Phil McCordick, and today we're going to be building an air-powered rocket. Too difficult, you say? Nonsense. It's easy. It's not like it's rocket science. Hey, it is rocket science. Cool! Here's what you need. You need a bottle and a cork. Make sure that the cork fits nicely into the bottle, and then you need an air pump, because you can't have an air-powered rocket without air. And on this air pump, you need a pin, the special kind that you use to inflate basketballs or volleyballs or stuff like that. Now, what you want to do is push the pin through the cork. You might want an adult's help for this. Push it through until it goes through on the other side, and then make sure you get a good seal with the bottle. Now you're ready to launch your rocket with air pressure. But first, let's do a few other things. Take your cork and put it in a tripod launcher. You can make this out of pencils or anything you want, as long as it stands up nice and solidly. And then, of course, you want to decorate your bottle so it looks like a rocket. This is my rocket. Pretty good, right? So stick the bottle on the cork like before, like that. And then you stick the pin in the bottom. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna inflate the bottle with air pressure, and then it's gonna launch. Okay, here we go. Uh, you know, rocketry really isn't something you should do indoors. Come on. will do nicely. <laughs> now, don't forget to do this with an adult and don't forget your safety glasses. Now set up the rocket in a nice big open area and make sure it's pointed away from you. And then what you do is you pump the air pump and it puts air into the rocket, which pushes down on the water, which will push down on the cork until eventually <laughs> so, be science maximites and come up with your own rocket design. Try different amounts of water, different fins, even a different size bottle. Try it for yourself and see if you can get one that goes higher than mine just did. All right, Sal, I'll see you next time. Oh, hey, how you doing? Let me guess, you got some work to do and you need it done easy, right? I mean, look at this book. I mean, you could pick it up, but what, are you gonna be some sort of book picker upper person now? Is that all you're gonna do? Is that gonna be your life, just picking up books left, right, and center? No, you're smarter than that. You know what you need? A lever, like this. Now, I know what you're thinking, I know. You're thinking, hey, this is just a plank. You're right, you're, cause that's because you're smart. A plank can be a lever. All you need is two sides and a place for it to pivot, a fulcrum. It can be anything. Look at this. Bam! Now it's pivoting. I put the book on this side, and then I push down on that side. I'm doing work 
work easy. Hey, look at me doing this work over here. If I want to do more work, I could move the fulcrum a little bit further over. Now I do lots of work, but I lift the book a lot further. Look at that. Whoa. Wow. Whoa. Yeah. Huh? What do you say? What do you say? What do you say? Huh? Huh? You don't like this lever? Don't worry. Hold on. I got another one for you here. Hey, take this stick. All you need is two ends and a place for it to pivot. Like this. Bam. Now, it's a lever. This side goes down, that side goes up. Down, up. It's a lever. It's a lever. You want to make a catapult? Use a spoon. The place where the spoon pivots is the fulcrum. And now, it's a lever. It's a lever. It's a lever. Look at this lamp. Now, it's a lever. Scissors, two levers. Your forearm? It's a lever, two ends, and the fulcrum where it pivots. Yeah, the fulcrum can be at one end. Crazy. This fish, you guessed it, now it's a lever. And now you know your levers. <laughs>